Um, welcome everyone to uh, tonight's meeting of the East Minister Town Council. Um, love to see you all here after Christmas, so Happy New Year to you all. It's an exciting year ahead. Um, we've got a lot to get through tonight, we've got a very busy agenda, so hopefully um, we, can, we can whiz through business tonight. And thank you for the members of the public that are in the room and uh, on Zoom. Item number one on the agenda is public question time. Um, I believe we have two people that want to speak, so we am going to close the door quickly. Final councillors are coming in. The snow may have slowed a few members up getting into that. Right. That's fine. Okay, everyone, everyone is in the room now. Uh, so I think we have two questions. So if those people are wanting to speak, um, we go first. Yes, um, the, there are two members of the public in the Zoom room who have indicated they'd like to speak. So really? this is your opportunity, um, so to do so now. So, uh, who, who's, uh... We've got, um, Mr. Hi, uh, good evening, everybody, and happy new year. Can you all hear me okay? We can. Yes. Yeah, fantastic. Um, so I was locked in a room as a teenager by the Church of Scientology, and I'm aware dozens of other people have experienced abuse at their St. Hill headquarters. Um, what are the council doing to protect the public and especially children from abuse? And how do councillors justify attending events hosted by Scientology in light of these allegations? Thank you very much for your, for your questions there and thank you for coming on. Um, really in public question time, we only really accept one question. Um, you know, there were kind of two very, very different and quite in-depth questions there. Which one would you like us to, to really focus on there? Um, let's start with the, the, the first one in that, in that case. You know, what are the council doing to protect people and especially children from abuse at St Hill in light of these, these allegations? Thank you. Um, I think that's quite a, a complex question to answer um, without any, any pre-warning to that question as, as any allegations towards that would need to be legally referenced um, for us to make a response to. Sam Clark, would you like to? Um, well, the only thing I can say is that the town council are not the public authority who deal with um, protection of adults, protection of children. Obviously, that comes under West Sussex County Council. Um, oh. However, if the town council um, were aware and had concerns of that, of that nature, then obviously the town council would report those as appropriate to the appropriate authority. I don't know there's much else I can really say, Chair. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, I think you're right. I think the, the, the town council um, isn't the right authority for that. But if you do have any questions or concerns, then you can obviously raise them through the official channels, through through the clerk, and then we can take that up with West Sussex. You can take that up further on your behalf if you wanted to. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I believe we have another question as well. Cool. Can I go ahead? Please do. Thank you, um, and good evening, everyone. Um, my question is wordy, but it is distilled to one question, so please hear me out. Um, so in the run-up to the Church of Scientology's International Association of Scientologists event in November 2023, church officials at St Hill failed to give the required six weeks' notice for a premises licence to the licensing authority. Reaching such conditions is considered a serious offence with a possible fine of up to £20,000 and or six months imprisonment stipulated under the Licensing Act. Yet despite this breach, the Church of Scientology received merely an advisory email to give notice in the future. Um, Section 10.1 of the Local Government Association Model Code of Conduct, which I know is on the agenda this evening, states that councils should not accept gifts or hospitality irrespective of estimated value, which could give rise to real or substantive personal gain, or a reasonable suspicion of influence to show favour from people seeking to acquire, develop, or do business with a local authority. So this, in my mind, raises questions about the relationship between the Church of Scientology and elected officials generally. Therefore, my question is such, 
To what extent do councillors agree that the continued attendance of Church of Scientology events, such as the Christmas light switch on, and the receipt of gifts, including charitable donations, risk undermining the integrity of the council and bringing councillors into disrepute? Thank you. Um, so again, a long question. Um, <laughs> without without prior notice, there's a lot to think about in a very short period of time. Um, I believe that uh, through the standards from Mid-Sussex, your question, uh, part of your question has already been answered and that we have a robust system in place, which is actually going to be further discussed tonight about um, gifts and donations that we are fully in compliance with um, all regulatory bodies about that and all declarations are fully clear, transparent and disclosed by all councillors that attend any event. Um, in regards to charity checks, that is obviously quite common for charity checks to be collected and received by councillors on behalf of charities. In fact, tonight we are handing out checks to um, sports council uh, awardees. So um, I'm not sure how charities give influence in that way, can be influenced that way. And that's, that's quite general and, and quite normal conduct for local authorities up and down the country. Um, we represent all members of our community and do so evenly and even-handedly so i thank you for your question um and i hope that those answers do answer it slightly for you but they are quite complex and quite tricky questions there but thank you and thank you both of for coming course. in and, and giving your time tonight to ask those questions we, we do appreciate all public participation thank you um there's no other pub members of the public in the room that want to ask questions are there and nobody else on zoom John Clark? there's nobody else on zoom okay thank you in that case, we can move on to item number two. Sorry, somebody has just arrived, oh. but I don't know that they want to ask me. Think that somebody has to in the Zoom room. The person that's just arrived in the Zoom room, do they wish to ask a question? Okay. We shall move on to item number two, which is to comment on 730, which is apologies for absence. Do we have any town clerk? Oh, apologies from Councillor Scott, um, who is unwell. Okay. We'll move to accept that. Too. Uh, please, yes. Um, I will propose that we accept that. Can I have a second for that? Second, yeah. And Sheriff Harris has stopped that. Thank you. That's carried. Thank you, Chair. Item number three is to confirm the minutes of the Town Council meeting held on the 4th of October. These are for accuracy. Um, I'd like to propose them. Could I have a second, please? I have a second, Chair. Thank you. Any comments or questions about those minutes? Can I have a hand? I have a hand to the top this minute. Thank you. <coughs> Second. Second. Second of October. Thank you. Item number four is to receive any declarations of personal or pecuniary interest, um, any new declarations obviously relating to the business on tonight's agenda. No? So item number five is town mayor's announcements. I'm going to do this in two parts. The first part is a um, really nice bit, which is to award um, the youth sports grants. Um, obviously, you've all had your money electronically, but we do have the big check for the vote opportunity. Um, I would like to go through each of you one by one. If you could just invite you just to stand up, um, say who you are and say a few words about your grant and what it means to you and what we're doing with it. So first, um, we're gonna start up with Atlas with Junior Football Club Road Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, thank you very much for this grant. Uh, it's a hell of a lot of us. Give some idea. We've got over 300 uh, young children ranging from the age of six right up to 18. Um, and uh, we've got roughly about um, 18 teams. Um, obviously, we play in different leagues. We play at five different venues. We haven't got a lot of ground. But I would say 90% of the children that are in our short school with Jimmy Football Club are in that fact come from the university. So it is legal. The kids are accepting money on behalf of the Believe me, it goes to the experience of the children. 
Um, we've been going for, or I've been going for about, uh, well, longer than 10 years, obviously, but um, I've been doing the job at Ashes for 10 years. And believe me, it's very, I moan about it, but believe me, it's very, very enjoyable. Very enjoyable. I have two grandchildren that have gone through the river roll from going from five to 18, and they thoroughly enjoy it. And I'm a great believer in sport. Um, added to uh, children's education. I think it's so important. Uh, but thank you again. This this money goes to various items, but we did apply for it for new goals, which we've got. Um, we paid out um, money for a ground over at Calvin, would you believe? You know, we're even in, venturing out to different counties, but um, they've gone up and it's superb. So thank you again. I much appreciate it. Thank you, Ray. Um, please go to the Sports Club, Victor Lamar, please. Hello, good morning, everybody. <coughs> um, uh, I'm a trustee of East Richardson Sports Club, and um, just want to say thank you as well for the um, contribution. It's not very often you put an application in and you get a little bit more than you're expecting. Um, but uh, we are, we've got a significant um, project, uh, just to remind those that may not be aware, we're trying to build four covered paddle tennis courts. Uh, on the top tier of the netball course for those of you that know the site and the sports club. It's a community club, it's not a private members club or anything like that. Community. And this particular, we want to make the courts available um, for the schools. Uh, we, we know the sports representation from the schools very well and give free court usage to the schools during the uh, daytime so that the schools can come up and have a go with paddle and just it's, it's not too onerous a sport, exercise-wise. It's probably um, not like squash, which is hard work. Tennis is very hard work, so it's me looking at John. Um, and um, so it's not so much, uh, it's not too onerous on the exercise front. So hopefully we'll get a lot of people that will want to give it a go, which is what we're trying to do. Uh, and th this, these funds will be spent on coaching and court hire time for those, in those uh, children um, as we get them built. And we're hoping to get them built in May or May time, hopefully. We can get raise the money and get uh, planning commission, which is in, I don't know if that's come through here yet, but uh, it's in, it's just gone in just before Christmas. And, uh, thank you very much. The funds are much appreciated. Uh, this is the cricket, uh, cricket Club, Christian Hunt. Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for the invite. Thank you very much for the invite. We really appreciate it. Uh, I can uh, tell you that it will be completely delivered towards the All-Star ECB program, for which I think you're aware of it, um, specifically for children who are five to eight years old. Um, in order to cover the sad eventuality of the fact that perhaps that sport isn't delivered at their primary schools, um, so it gives them that chance to get involved in the sport perhaps they didn't have to in the past. Um, many of you may not be aware that, unfortunately, when you, when you purchase the opportunity to do um, the all-star program, right? All the money goes to the ECB, not one penny goes to actually the clubs that deliver it. Um, and when you have between 50 and 80 children that we have, for the five to eight, you need a number of coaches in order to deliver it. Mm. So the entire world works to the coach to deliver that program. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 For our grant, um, mm -hmm. we applied for it primarily for um, this time of year every season since it got <coughs> taken over. Well, staff as managers under five. Um, every year, this time of year, we miss out massively football due to the weather. Um, I'm a member of the East 20 Sports Club myself, so we thought we'd apply for a grant that would help us be able to pay, pay to train and play games at the sports club. Um, a little bit of extra equipment is going to be um, very handy as well. Um, Bob, I'll tell you that you promised me to, although they've cooled down. Um, so, that, yeah, we want to keep everything local and it keeps the, keeps the boys playing um, as much as we can for the season. Brilliant, thank you very much. We've got East Greenwich the Target Shooting Club, Mike Kettleton. Mm -hmm. Um, we have 
We've got a couple of other duties now, and um, since COVID finished, we came out of lockdown, we've been getting lots of inquiries from the younger section of the juniors to go sort of 10 upwards. And normally we only deal with 14 upwards. So if we're going into the airside things, we can start at 10 and that should be more than one. So that's going to help us do that. Uh, it's still, so it's usually one, so it's smaller than a grip, and it's a bit of a hole, it's like a hole, it's a bit of a hole, it's a bit of a hole, it's a bit of a coach, I find it amazing when I see Julius come in, but I've never shot before, and I think it's dead easy, and I start showing the technicalities of it, and the first evening, they get about three or four shots away, really good, considering they've never shot before. Then it's concentration drifts and it starts to spread around the trot. So the time they've been down with us three or four weeks on the trot, you can see the concentration get better and better and better. And to me, that can only be good when they go forward into the sort of working community and um, develop the series. So um, I find she's been a very good support. Mm -hmm. I love it. It's something I've done all my life. And I'm more than happy to teach anybody else how to do it. Thank you very much for the stage. Thank you. Tom, we've got uh, East Coast to Cap at the Club, Brian. Very well, good evening, all. And uh, my name's Brian Corkadell, I'm the Vice Chairman and Shop Secretary of the Institution. Again, as everyone else, thank very much for the, the grant. Um, everyone at the Football Club, at East Coast of Town, uh, completely volunteers, no one gets paid for what we do, so it's an awful lot of work. It goes into putting football on for youths in the town um, by not that many people. Um, so any grants, any money that is raised, um, takes a lot of raising. Um, we've been approached by a couple of uh, parents to, to start two new youth teams next season, to sort of complement what we've already got. So uh, next season, we're looking to start another 12 year old and 17, not 17. So, uh, Cost involved in starting a team from scratch is about two and a half grand a team, just before it's kicked off. So it does take a lot of getting from various places. So uh, a, a grant like this really makes a big difference to clubs like us. So that, that's what it's going towards. It's, uh, it's going towards training for coaches and things they have to go through, uh, the coaching qualifications and kit wise and things like that. Where the money's going to be used. So, again, thank you very much for that. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that one, yeah, yeah. So, what we're going to do, gentlemen, we're going to go down to one of my little billboards. You can hold that right. You want to come on. Stay for the rest of the meeting, or you can go. And we'll get a fresh cut off to the <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. Say Jenny home in this night. <laughs> Okay, so the next thing I'm going to come to is um, just to discuss some of the events and things and highlights of the last few months as, as mayor. Um, it has been a very, very busy few months. <laughs> um, everyone of past mayors warned me that it would be busy. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't quite appreciate quite how busy it would be, but equally how absolutely rewarding it would be. It has been some of the best months of, of my life. Um, seeing some of the charities and organisations within our town 
Town has been truly inspiring, uh, humbling and eye-opening. I'm going to go through a few of the, the items on here. But firstly, we'll start with a bit more positive one. I'd like to thank everyone that came along and supported some of my charity events, from the barn dance, you all look fabulous, um, uh, through to my uh, um, carol concert and other events. Thank you all the councillors that have supported and uh, my deputy who has been by my side for all of it. Thank you. Um, attending events as mayor isn't always some of the big things. It can be some of the smaller tiny little organizations that only have a handful of members and going along and supporting them like the chess club we gave them a small grant and it's amazing to see the chess club in East Grinstead the, the community and the love that they have for the game and being together and an activity for sometimes slightly older demographic in the town is, is great they were a great group of people I went to a premiere of a film made by a local filmmaker called Broken Eyes um, and he'd, he'd managed to get it in um, in, in the cinema in East Grinstead. He's, he's grown up in the town. I've, I've known him actually a long time in the town, and it was it was great to see this guy. It's won it's won national awards. This film, East Grinstead talent out there, it was great to go and see. One of the ones that was really <clears throat> incredible was the night that uh, my wife and I spent out with the street pastors. It rained in. A biblical manner. <laughs> it was it was entertaining. There was um, a lot going on in town that night as well. It was a payday weekend. There was a boxing match at Checker Mead. There was a, uh, a boxing match streamed live on telly. And there was a lot of activity. And to see the love and fearlessness that the street pastors went out with to protect people and handing out flip-flops when girls had lost their shoes and bottles of water to help people that maybe had had a little bit too much enjoyment um, was great. But the thing that really struck home was, especially with young girls, they saw the street pastors were out and you could see their body language change. They knew that somebody was there watching out, making sure they're okay when they left the, the pub or the club. And seeing that was, was amazing. And the work they do all through the year in all weathers should be applauded. One of the fun ones was going to talk to the beavers. And I love talking to the kids, going to talk to the beavers and the schools and the absolutely brilliant questions that they ask me, absolutely bonkers questions. Um, I love that. It just makes me smile and the enjoyment in their faces is, is lovely. Another great one was um, a very busy weekend in the middle of November was the Lions PSA testing that was held here. And... Uh, Thank you to Councillor Whitaker for his hard work on, on, on that day as well. But watching the men come through to be tested rather sheepishly in large numbers that were sold out um, was incredible. And the percentage of people that would have, something would have been flagged and that they go and get checked and it saves a life. There were people there volunteering who had, their prostate cancer had been caught by this testing in the past. And as men, we are, let's be honest, a bit rubbish at doing this sort of thing. And... The work the Lions are doing to help the people in our community there is huge. And that was that was great to see. So well done to them. Then we had the Remembrance Sunday, which I think everyone who walked in that parade can acknowledge that East Winstead comes out and supports that <clears throat> in a way that is so inspiring. It is lovely to do. It's strange to say it's lovely to do on a, on a sad event, but I'm so proud of East Winstead and so proud of all of you guys turning out for that. Thank you. Then we had the big reveal. Wasn't that amazing? I mean, the amount of people, it was standing room only from the Robert Dyer's crossroads right up to the top of the town. Mm -hmm. I was one of the founding people that started out on the first 10 shops that ever did it when I had my shop in the high street. And to see it grow from an idea where we thought we would just paper up the windows, everyone would think we were closing down, and then suddenly go, ta-da, here's that Christmas windows, to the event it has become with the, the tree lights going on and the Christmas lights going on. And to see everyone volunteering and helping and working there was just brilliant. I mean, to turn the lights on to that sea of people in my very tasteful suit was just lovely. The suit, by the way, has grown its own personality and people started requesting the suit along with the mayor to events. Um, one that was slightly out of town, but very important to our town, was the St. Catherine's Hospice opening. 
to go to their new facility. Um, if you get a chance in any capacity to go up there, hopefully in a capacity of councillors, not in the capacity that it's required, <clears throat> um, it's amazing what they have built. And the future proofing that they have there now to provide more end of life care for local residents is it's incredible. The, the extra care that it will be able to provide and the better working conditions for staff and the more types of people it can take now is great. And it's the generosity of so many people donating and supporting that has meant this has happened. And they now, you know, they're moving patients in, patients are in there. Go over and have a look if you can, because it's it's brilliant. Um, a fun one was the Safa concert at Checkermead. That was lovely. That was a really nice one that got everyone feeling very Christmassy. That was great to see them in, in Checkermead. It makes me again so proud of how great Checkermead is, um, along with the Panto, which was just incredible. Oh, come on, someone. Oh, no, oh, thank, <laughs> you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Oh, you're very oh, welcome, Talbot. That's all right, we can have that behind us. Um, <laughs> so that was, that, that, that was great. Um, a lovely one was the, the, the Sackville College Carols. Um, if you ever get a chance to go and do that, buy yourself a ticket next year, go along to it. Um, to sing in the little chapel there is is lovely. And then halfway through, they stopped and did a, a reading all about Good King Wenceslas that was obviously written there. And then to go and see where that carol was actually written um, was, a, was lovely. That, that facility and what they do there, they need people to go along and buy those tickets and support them because it, it requires the, all the financial help it can get. And it is so beautiful in the centre of our town. Another one which I know is very close to Councillor Peacock's heart here, which is the Being Neighbourly Christmas Lunch. What a fantastic organisation that is in our town to help people. I always struggle with saying this, it's social isolation. isolation. That's a very good thing to say. But meeting, and I went around and chatted to everyone that was there and their stories of, of genuine loneliness in the elderly in our, in our community. They just, without that, they would be really stuck of who to talk to and their friends and going out, having a Christmas dinner, so kindly supported by Dunning's Mill, paid for by the people having the charity quizzes there that they, that they, they take the money and pay for this meal, um, was great. Watching these, these, these elderly couples and people on their own um, getting slowly more drunk and enjoying their Christmas <laughs> festivities was, was lovely to see. Then we got into some sort of more serious ones with the, the food bank bag pack in the town which is a military operation um i'm sure many of you have been to the food bank at the jubilee if you haven't go and have a look those guys run that so well um it's such a shame that in our town we still require that food bank to be as big and as professional as it is um and they need, they need as much help as we can give them but that that bag pack if you get a chance to next year they're always looking for volunteers to go along and help and that was a really good thing to do for christmas Slightly eclipsed by the 23rd of uh, December, the, the Greenaway Foundation. Check Christmas, not bag pack, but the, 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 sorry, the putting out of, of food and delivering of food. It started with five families and there was an over 900 families delivered to this year. Full Christmas meal, um, presents up to the value of £25 per selection <coughs> for children. Um, Councillor De Bell and um, his wife are there, and you were there as well, mm -hmm. leader. And to see the effort that goes in and the need was exceptional. The bit that affected me and my wife the most was the bit slightly outside, which was a huge line of these that were for people suffering from domestic violence or in hiding from it, and. Claire and I were given the great privilege to go and deliver some of these. We went right up to Rygate and Red Hill and out and about delivering some of these to, to people. And what they did was to give Christmas to people that had no hope of a Christmas and to those children. And that was amazing. I think the more that us as councillors can support these sort of initiatives and help, the better. Um, and although it was a terrible, sad, feeling and to see it was, was devastating the need for it it made me really feel so grateful for everything i have in life and how much we have and how many of us have 
the, the simple things that are missing from so many people. And it was incredible. I had a couple of other ones this, this year already, kicked out the blocks early with Inverhorn School's A-level presentations, which was amazing. And lots of very hungover kids dragged in to collect their, uh, their, their A-level certificates before they go back to university, we were sitting there with their parents, looking like Kevin the teenager, that was great. But then yesterday I attended uh, the first veterans breakfast at, uh, at, at uh, the Sussex pub and it was, it was great. The work that Paul Grief and his committee have put together there to bring that to the fore is amazing. Veterans that <clears throat> can't get to crawl where the nearest one was, that live in East Princeton and they, they struggle to get over there for a million years, and now have somewhere they can drop in, they can seek help, they can meet people, they can discuss. And already from conversations yesterday, we're helping a few people that have come out of the woodwork. So um, I want to say a huge thank you to Paul and his team for putting that together. It was great. So as I say, it's been, it's been busy. That is just a little highlight of some of the events. But all of them are amazing. And as councillors, we are given the privileged position to help these people to look behind the curtains of our community. And we have an amazing community. The volunteers, the people that are helping without any thanks, anything is, is amazing. So thank you to all of you for your support. And I know I've whittled on a little bit on this, but it was a, a, a long one and there were a lot on there that I wanted to give thanks and highlight. So thank you. Looking forward to it next year, mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, item number six is to receive such communications as the leader, the council may decide to lay before the council. So, hello, over to you. Thank you, Tom. Uh, uh, as, so, mine is short and sweet, <laughs> so you'll all be pleased to know. So, um, really, just a couple of things um, come to fruition that we want to share and put out there that um, the Barnabas is just about ready to. Uh, Start renting out at the end of January. They've worked incredibly hard. Sorry, I'm going on to that. <laughs> it has now been renamed. That was my next line, Town Clock. Um, and it's now been renamed as Sunnyside Barn. So um, we'll be calling it um, quite a correct name and um, moving forward. And hopefully we'll start to get some renters in there. And then we'll have a, an official opening at some point where we'll all go there and obviously the mayor will be able to cut some sort of ceremonial ribbon. So that's fantastic that that's going to be up. A little bit out of time to go, but it's going to be up by the new time to go that we did send, so that's fabulous. Um, I really want to thank all of the um, council officers. They've worked incredibly hard over the last year. I really want that noted, how much they work and support us, and all the things they do for the community themselves as part of their role, and also supporting us in doing our role. So I really want to thank them. Um, and they do a lot of, especially this time, well, the end of the year, the Christmas period, they have an awful lot of jobs to do as well as their job. Um, and But it did finish off extremely well with, we had the Christmas lights turned on with so many of the officers out there as well as us <coughs> supporting it. Um, the new lights looked amazing, so it was great to see those up, um, which is fantastic, especially on this building, they looked phenomenal. Um, and also we finished it off with um, glitter and mince pies for those that attended that. It was a really super morning and all the officers were out there being to thank all the people do support um, within the council. My final thanks goes on to all of you, all of you councillors. I'd like to thank you um, for all your work on your committees. I would particularly like to mention this time round, though, um, the new committee, the Environmental and Sustainable Travel. Um, so I'd really like to thank all the members on that. Thank you to the chair of that, Steve, for bringing that to fruition. It's a lot of hard work. We've had lots of meetings. We're now going to every other month. Lots of lovely projects that we can get our teeth into moving forward. So that committee this year is um, that we'll have some projects that we can start and finish, some small achievements to get us on the map of doing something new. So thank you to all of you as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Leader. Item number six. Are there any questions? Yeah. Well, I've got a few but I would like to take this opportunity to thank the Leader members. <coughs> for progressing St Barbara's now Sunny Hill Barn. Um, that, I'd also like to thank uh, Dick Sweatman, who was previous council and leader, who helped kick that project off. And I think it's a congratulations to everyone that that's been concluded so quickly. And we do have a centre, a low-profit provision centre for community events outside the centre. So thank you to all of you for putting that forward. It's not a question, but it's something to put on there. Any other questions, Dick? 
Item number seven, then, is to dispose of any business outstanding from the last meeting. There is none. Item number eight is principal council update from West Sussex County Councillor Ian Gibson. Unfortunately, Councillor Gibson has been unwell and his voice is slightly weakened at the moment, so he submitted a written report to be read by the town clerk. I do believe that maybe your voice is strong enough to answer any questions. I think potentially. I can probably manage questions. Brilliant. Uh, you're so you're so you're right. Right. You can have the speech or you can have questions. You are a trooper, Councillor. So, um, Town Clerk, would you like to read the statement? Clear <clears throat> my throat before I start. The introduction of a booking system at the recycling centre in February has been confirmed. I endeavoured to call in the decision for review on the basis that the Cabinet member had not presented any evidence of need, as had been the case for its introduction at the Crawley Centre. The call-in was supported by Burgess Hill, Lib Dem and two Chichester-based independents. I did not receive any support from any of the local councillors. The request was dismissed by the County Monitoring Officer. The key reason was that the decision had been discuss discussed and endorsed by a scrutiny committee. The committee discussion was actually inconclusive, but the monitoring officer's decision is finally. I used the opportunity of written questions for the December Council to set out the information I believe is required to support the decision to introduce a booking scheme and ask whether the Council had this. The question and the answers can be found on the West Sussex County Council Council meetings web page. On the positive side, it turns out that even without a booking system, East Grinstead has the highest recycling rate of all the centres at 84% and only drops to second when green waste is excluded. It's difficult to see how the booking scheme is going to improve these figures, given that East Grinstead is already ahead of centres operating at the booking scheme. The major pressures on the current year budget are the children's, young people and learning and skills portfolio. These were predicted to be around £20 million overspent on a £200 million annual budget at the end of quarter two. This overspend is in addition to the continuing growth in the Education Direct Support Grant, which has held off budget. Quarter three figures should be available shortly, notably the handover of the Woodland Mead Special Needs School has been delayed twice. The council will be setting the increase in council tax at the maximum allowed, 3% plus 2% for adult social care for the 24-25 financial year. The main pressures for setting a balanced budget are the increases in number of special educational needs students and their home to school transport costs. There is also significant cost increases in capital projects. The new four-form entry secondary school at Burgess Hill, Brookley, is being retendered after no affordable bids were received in response to the first tender. The specification essentially is a passive house school and has not been changed. Although the Inverhorn application is being progressed and includes significant new sports facilities for Inverhorn School, there is no progress on the proposed relocation of the lower school from Windmill Lane to Inverhorn Lane. The inflationary increases in building costs will push up costs of, the, of both the new building and the maintenance work which is needed at Windmill Lane. Against this background, there is expected to be a significant pressure on Year 7 secondary school places this autumn, and a bulge class is being planned at Inverhorn Lane with the intention of a permanent change to an 11 form entry. The roadworks at the Park Road, Maypole Road Junction are the implementation of a community highway scheme to make the crossing from Crescent Road safer. Frankly, the layout revisions being implemented are not what the requesters wanted. The changes will force residents heading to Halstead Park and other schools to cross Park Road and then Maypole Road rather than just crossing Park Road to the western side of Maypole Drive. There is a lesson here about being careful what you wish for. The community highway scheme now has no fixed dates and the applications are evaluated immediately. Implementation of anything other than the most minor works like painting the highway will require the support of Section 106 funds. I cannot raise requests myself, I can only approve requests raised by others. There is one outstanding CHS request in Inverhorn, which is for pedestrian refuge to make crossing at the A22 London Road safer by a stream park fell water court. This scheme is unlikely to be considered until the outcome of the 22264 corridor study is known at the end of the year. If I could just inter <coughs> um, intercept at that point, that CHS has now been submitted. So if you're not aware of that, Councillor Gibson, that has gone in. And I will be meeting with them shortly. Yeah. 
Oh, no, no, I appreciate that, but it has been submitted um, and uh, it's been submitted by this town council. <coughs> Regarding the A22 A264 corridor study, this was expected to conclude the review of previous studies by the end of the year, but no reports have been issued or announced and there have been no further meetings of the steering group. I'm continuing to monitor the plan planned resurfacing of Heathcote Drive and the Duke's Head roundabout next financial year. I do not have dates at the moment. Currently, flooding is a greater concern and potholes, but I'd encourage everyone to report potholes on the West Sussex County Council pothole webpage as soon as they emerge. The county target for repairs is 28 days. Residents will be able to claim for damage if the pothole is not fixed by then. The county is paying out on a large <coughs> number of claims from last winter. The process is slow. I think most residents know to take photos and keep receipts. With more local bus services being cut, particularly link links to West Hoathly, I thought it was worth mentioning the county reintroduced a book a bus service around Chichester last autumn. The new buses have no fixed routes or times. Customers book on a day using an app called Pingu and have to be prepared to wait. This could be something the council should be pressing the county to, to introduce here, given the need to reduce car usage. The county is continuing to roll out EV charging points in partnership with Mid Sussex District Council and Connected Curb. The focus has moved from car parks to residential streets. My experience is that residents don't want them because of the loss of parking spaces. Some councils are <clears throat> testing systems like Charge Gully, which enable houses without parking to charge their vehicles on the road in the front of the house with the charging cable set in a secure channel cut in the pavement. This seems like a good solution although you can't always park in front of your own home. The, the county's upgrade of its business management systems covering finance, procurement, HR and payroll to Oracle Fusion has run into some problems associated with data cleansing and the transfer of records. The programme is currently being reassessed. This is an activity which is expected to deliver major savings in administration costs mm -hmm. for the council. The county is already looking ahead to May 25 elections and is holding a number of beer council events. The nearest to East Grinstead is in Crawley on the 20th of February at 6.30 p.m. That's the report. <coughs> Has anyone got any questions for Councillor Gibson? Thank you, Jeff. Uh, yes, uh, I'd just like to uh, thank Councillor Gibson for his work on that recycling. Um, uh, uh, although um, <coughs> it was... Uh, uh, not what the answers that we all want is, but I would also li like to um, uh, say to uh, committee that you can actually now cycle to the recycling centre with your refuse if you wanted to, and there will be your rubbish will be taken away, and you can cycle back home afterwards, <laughs> which you weren't able to do before. Thank you. Thank you. Not limited to be cycling shopping bags on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I too like to thank Councillor Gibson for his uh, sterling work number one absolutely in the curve drive. There's some jet capture, which is a fantastic piece of kit that Councillor Gibson has got three of them. We saw it in action in the summer, fantastic. Uh, and it's done a brilliant temporary job. I'm looking forward very much in the next quarterly parliamentary year to the full research. Thank you for your efforts so much. If I can just say, Chairman, that um, I actually got an email this afternoon. I have a uh, questions just about what was happening with both the top drive. And the, and the Duke's Head Roundabout, which is, you know, sort of also an area of much discontent amongst residents. Um, they are both out for tender at the moment um, in order to, so that the, the financials will be there and the plans are there for the new financial year. Um, so I will, as soon as I have dates, I will start to tell everyone because it will be major disruption. Okay, thank you. Yes, it's well, that's the other side of the problem, isn't it? You fix one problem, but we've got a small temporary one. Any other questions at all? In that case, uh, Deputy Tommy, I would like to do a little well, thank you. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I'd like to thank Councillor Gibson for his very comprehensive report and Town Clerk for reading it so well. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, you, uh, a, lot, a lot of work goes unnoticed, and we all know that um, you put a, a shift in uh, for us for that county, and uh, we'd like to thank you for that. So thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, item number nine is through receiving set of the minutes of the committees. Um, we're going to start with uh, Councillor Odie for planning and for um, 
E and S T as well. You can do oh, that. All, in, all in one go. Save you standing up and down, up and down. It's you're a jack in the box tonight. So <laughs> count thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, yes, before I begin, I, I would very much like to uh, thank <coughs> uh, both ministers for their uh, work and their uh, efforts that have been uh, uh, planning and the environment of sustainable travel. Um, it's been, uh, from a planning perspective, it's been a very helpful. 2023 and uh, 2024 looks like it's not going to change. So uh, I look forward to that um, and uh, with excitement and enthusiasm and optimism, um, I would like to uh, uh, recommend uh, these minutes uh, that we receive these minutes on block if that's okay, committee. Um, uh, first time planning uh, meeting, 16th of October, uh, page numbers 91 to 95, minute number 167 to 173. Uh, planning meeting on the 6th of November 2023, page numbers 99 to 103, minute number 182 to 190. Uh, planning meeting 27th of November 2023, page numbers 108 to 116, minute numbers 202 to 208. And planning meeting on the 18th of December 2023, minute, uh, page numbers 134 to 138, uh, and minute number 246. Two five three. Would you second? Can I have a second from the committee? Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Pond. Any questions about those minutes at all? Now, just now, a show of hands to adopt those minutes. <coughs> cool. Thank you very much. Uh, yes. Um, again, thank you uh, to uh, the committee for the environmental and sustainable travel. Very exciting committee, and uh, I know that twenty twenty four is going to bring some really cool things coming through from this council. So I'm very excited about that. Um, I'd like to, uh, again, put all of these um, minutes uh, through on block, if that's possible. The uh, meeting on the 19th of October, page numbers 96 to 98, minute number 174 to 181. Uh, the uh, meeting on the 23rd of November, page numbers 104 to 107, minute number 191 to 201. And the meeting on the 21st of December, 139, page numbers 139 to 143, minutes and numbers 254 to 264. Thank you. Can I have a second for those, please? Thank you, Councillor Belzy. Any questions on those minutes at all? Nice to have a show of hands. That's carried. Thank you, Councillor Rowley, for chairing a lot of meetings. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next, can I have uh, Councillor Whitaker for public services? Thank you, Chandler. Yes, I only have the one meeting, but it was a full two hour meeting. So, as usual, uh, uh, agenda back meeting. Um, uh, first of all, um, I'd like to thank uh, my boss, Jeff Cancel Reed, for a fantastic support, and particularly to the Stan Clark for producing in public services extensive reports and research and coordination to the uh, Ladies Cross uh, effort there. Um, so we touched on just the, some of the subjects that are in the minutes. Pharmacies, the uh, Lloyd's Pharmacy Sales, so that's a matter of conquering the town and the restructuring successfully. Um, there's a new uh, dispensing machine down at so Lloyd's, uh, so the pharmacy <coughs> in Selbridge. If you haven't seen it, come have a look. It's, it's a very whiz bang. Uh, again, in touch to uh, uh, Councillor Gibson uh, and also Councillor Rebell, Councillor Russell for the road surfacing. Progress continued in the second half of this year. Which, is, which has been uh, super, uh, so hopefully that progress continues. We also touched on the Open Spaces contract, uh, now awarded by the District Council to uh, Glendale, uh, and, and the impact that that could and maybe will have on the South Council and its outside services team. So the monitoring progress across the that contractor that has just started uh, in January uh, last week. Um, the rail ticket, obviously, is the Council put in a substantial consultation, so we're, we're delighted that uh, the government has backtracked on that. Uh, network rail and, and they are staying open for the moment. We noted the CCTV increased costs of via the District Council of that, and, that, and that's had to be absorbed in our budget going forward uh, for the next financial year. Police, as always, um, is, is a major discussion point. We welcome Doug Johnson, who's the Regional Sergeant out of the, uh, the, the Crawley Station. He was very good. Chris Lovelock is our senior PCSO in the town, and we know puts himself about a lot, and uh, you know, we see him a lot and, and now achieving things. Um, we, we put it to the police that various town intelligence uh, that all councillors get from time to time, and the various points have been raised, Councillor Fennell, Councillor Hughes, and others, we put that to the police. So 
um, if we have specific evidence base, we can forward those via the town clerk to the police and they will act on it. Um, we were delighted to have the new Chief Executive Officer of Queen Victoria, James Lowell, uh, in for uh, uh, Tom. He's been, he's he started in September. Very, very impressive. Like the whole community world was very impressed with him. Did a very good QA, uh, got lots of good ideas, and the feedback we got, I think, the staff are, are very appreciative of, of, of his personality and charisma and hopefully ideas going forward. Combined with that meeting, very crucially, we still hold, trying to hold modalities to, to the fire uh, in, in terms of um, critique. Um, so we had we, the town clerk was persevered for six months to get NHS integrated care board into this chamber. So we have Penny Ford, who's the regional MP for West Sussex NHS. <coughs> so she, she came uh, attending on Zoom. But we also um, have uh, Dr. Patel, who's the senior partner at Mobile Surgery. That's what we found through communications from the town clerk and the chair and vice chair uh, and the deputy town clerk was that Mobile are significantly impacted over the past year with, with the position with modality and the uh, um, special measures that effectively they are in um, and patients going from modality to Oakfield. So, so we wanted to fly the flag from Oakfield with the, with the ICP. So that was successfully done on the evening. Had, had a very good cross, cross debate. Um, we had an East Grinsley Food Bank, uh, Tamo, you, you touched on that and you made the initial introduction with them when you visited, I think, in September. So we, we had them and they did a very good presentation. Um, effectively, they've restructured since COVID. Uh, quite a lot of new people, new, certainly a lot of new systems have got a new app in, lots of good ideas. Um, uh, uh, they, they have uh, external consultants coming in to do citizen advice and financial advice. And the whole, their whole service is spread from just providing bare essentials and food to way more than that now. So, so, so I, would, I would echo what Tam Man said, his support them still based on Jubilee. Um, so we're, we're continuing to support them going forward. They want to introduce a local bank to have the source in Worry, but just to help out some of their, some of their clients as well. Um, uh, our officer, Alice Fletcher, obviously came in to talk about uh, Sunside Bar uh, now, uh, with Lee and, and, the, and the work there, so that's great. And finally, well, you already mentioned uh, the uh, recycling centre. We discussed that, um, but obviously that decision has been taken. So again, we'll continue to monitor that. So thanks to the whole committee um, uh, for those concerns. I'd like to propose the minutes from the 30th of November for adoption pages 117 to 123 inclusive, minute numbers 209 to 221. Thank you. One second, that's... Um, any comment, any questions? In that case, can I have a show of hands too? Thank you. Thank you for that thorough report there. Um, Councillor Belsey, please, for a minute to us. Thank you, Chairman. Um, and thank you to everyone that's uh, participated in the Minister of Tourism. <coughs> uh, I won't go through the whole agenda, but it was, it was packed. And, <laughs> um, and we've got a wide range of exciting and awesome projects to look forward to uh, this coming year. Uh, but I'd like to close the minutes for the meeting that we have on the 7th of December, page numbers 12428, and then it's number 220 to 225. Another second for that, please. Thank you, Councillor Hughes. Any comments on that at all? Okay, can I have a show of hands to adopt those minutes? Thank mm -hmm. you. And last but not least, Town Leader, could you, uh, for finance and general purpose? Thank you, Town Mayor. <laughs> so um, uh, I'd like to, I'm not going to make a big speech, you'd be pleased to know I feel like I've done my thank yous. So um, as chair of the Finance and General Purposes Committee, I would like to propose the minutes of the meeting held on the 14th of December 2023, pages number, <coughs> I need my glasses, are 129 to 133, minute numbers 226 to 245. <coughs> Please, I'd like to propose those for you. Can I have a second for those? <laughs> Any questions at all? No show of hands to top those minutes. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. And number 10 is to authorise the sealing of the following documents the grant of exclusive right of burial numbers uh, 2307, 2308, 2309, 2310, 2311, 2312, and 2313. Uh, could I have a, a second for those, please? I have a second. Okay. 
Can I have a show of hands to fix the seal? Thank you. That's carried. Thank you, Chair. Item number 11 is review of the standing orders, financial regulations and code of conduct. This is going to be done in two halves. The first half is to advise the council officers have uh, reviewed the current standing orders, financial regulations and code of conduct, have one additional small correction to make on the financial regulation section 5 banking regulations, which I would like to take first. This came to light after the agenda was issued as a substantive item is on the agenda and can be considered. I'd like to propose the rewording of paragraph 5.6 of the financial regulations, page 25, which concerns who has authority to use the town council credit cards. The proposal is to change town promotion manager to a state and civic pride manager. May I have a second for that, please? I'll second. Thank you. Tim, just before you go further, you just to explain that one because obviously it didn't go out on the agenda so just have a little bit more um, meat onto that one um, it was simply as we were going through them um, that the um, the RFO the, the responsible finance officer discovered that we had the old name of the town promotion officer as one of our signet, one of our users of a credit card mm -hmm. and clearly we no longer have that post so the person who now holds a credit card is actually the civic pride the estate and civic pride manager this is simply changing one post name to the other post mm -hmm. name nothing else is being done on there that, that's all it is thank you for that clarification are there any other comments on that at all in that case can i have a show of hands to amend that thank, thank you, you. Two other motions regarding the standing orders review have been submitted by Councillor Pond for consideration. So before I go to Councillor Pond, are there any other matters regarding standing orders that anyone wishes to raise? If not, I then refer to Councillor Pond to make his motions, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Councillors. Um, so on review of the standing orders, um, in discussion with the town clerk, I would like to propose the following amendments. So there's two motions here. We'll take them each in turn. Um, so the first one is in relation to standing order 13A, and this is in, to insert the word being LGA model councillor code of conduct 2020 brackets approved by LGA 3rd of the 12th 2020 as amended, followed, followed by the words by the council. Um, can I have a second for that, please? Any comments on that at all? In that case, can I have a show of hands to adopt that wording? Take against, please. Against? Abstaining? That's, um, that's okay. <coughs> that's to make it too. Thank you, Chair. And um, so this is the following addition to the standing order. So there's not currently something in place. So this is addition. This is adding 13H in respect of Code of Conduct 10.2. All gifts and hospitalities accepted or refused of any value should be added to the hospitality book with an estimated <coughs> value brackets if over £25, comma, and where the amount has exceeded £50 in value, that entry should also be made in the declaration of interest interests within 28 days, which will then be notified to the monitoring officer by the proper officer of the council. Can I have a second for that moment? Thank you. Can I have any questions on that? Councillor. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, I'm just wondering, Councillor why when we have um, documents produced by local association or the uh, National Association of Local Councillors, why we need to add something that is there, um, except that it is, because in our um, code of conduct, which is the one that's been asked <coughs> um, for the questions, um, part 10.2 there deals with the need to um, register any gift with an estimated value of at least 50 pounds and to register if an offer of a significant gift has been refused. So the two things are there already. So um, I'm just a little concerned if we stop writing words for ourselves, 
and then have to go to the LGA for advice if there's any query on it when they haven't written it, they're not party to <coughs> or anything else, that the, the actual legal interpretation could be quite offensive, difficult, and all the rest of it. Whereas if it's words they've got, then they will have a standard sort of approach to what to prepare. Um, and if the aim is to reduce the threshold to 25 pounds from 50, that would be done simply by changing the amount in, the, in our uh, code of conduct, which currently says 50 pounds. So there are two places where you're talking, if you're putting it in a different place, in an amount that conflicts with what exists in another part of the documents that we need to comply with. Um, but also, I'm just a little concerned as the precise wording of, of it, as how it would apply. Let's say a simple, simple example. I'm, I'm um, a trustee of Jack and the Fifth. So there are things which I would know, because I'm invited to go and her because they wanted all the trustees to be at the That would be something that could be a very good amount. But if this is phrased, the way that it's got the, the brackets around £25 implies that you have to buy um, everything, put everything into register. Every time I attend the meeting, there, I have to see how I actually got to come in every time and register. Uh, so that's why working is important, and I think we should get the advice of the LGA. Um, if we're going to make such a change to their together. I've got no qualms if the aim is to reduce the threshold from 50 pounds to 25 pounds, I'm sure they would just nod the head and say, if that's what you want, that's what you want. Um, it's coming up with words that could be interpreted in different ways where our advisors are not qualified to what we're putting forward. So I would suggest that if that's the aim, then um, pass this to the LGA for their advice and, and respond accordingly when they are going to find that. Councillor Fonda, at the end of the, I have to go around the room and then we can come back to, to, to you. Um, Councillor Peacock, you yeah. raise your hand. Yeah, thank you. I think my thoughts, immediate reactions are along the same lines as Councillor Barley. Um, the first thing I've observed is that these code of conducts come from now. They're part of a national framework, and every single council within England and Wales, as far as we should assume, and I think we can assume that, will be using the standard wording, standard, standard format, and standard work. So we start tweaking the wording with what I would say about, I would say, extended analysis of the discussion to what some of the implications are. Council of Barnett comments on check and need. Uh, and ironically, Check and Read used to be owned by the town council directly up to 2016, and every single councillor was in the management committee of that council of, of Check and Read. The property is owned by the town council. The CEO was set up. The streamlined management of Check and Read to make it more efficient organisation. A number of councillors, I think it was five at the time, were appointed by council of the town council at this, this council meeting, or similar council meeting represent them, you know, the council. That's, a, that's one example. There are another example I can think of if we go to an opening of a new building site, to a new construction centre, where we <coughs> we might have one or two glasses of champagne. Does that need reflected? We're seeing a SAFA concert today. You know, that has a tangible value. You've been invited, invited as the town mayor of many of us. That is an honour to be there. Does that need <coughs> uh, reflecting? So what I would suggest we need greater time to consider the full implications because we're devi deviating away from standard national wording and policy. Mm -hmm. And secondly, if this is district where I'm monitoring uh, so resides, there is a committee that would have take, taken time, maybe a couple of months, working with officers and councillors across the political, political spectrum to discuss this and go through the ramifications. And obviously, this has been on the agenda for a couple of weeks, but it's been across Christmas, and I, I don't know if 
all councillors have the opportunity to discuss the unintended consequences. So I've got no issue if you wanted to change the fence to, to £25, as Councillor Barnett has mentioned. But I think we need to reflect carefully what the unintended ramifications of this went through. So it's not necessarily I'm against change. What are the unintended ramifications of a, as you say, precipitous, a precipitous change that has to be discussed within the wider group against a national framework of documents? And we wouldn't do this if we were part of a, an international national company. HQ would set what the standard work is, the rules are, and they're in a similar situation. We're accounted within a larger framework of England and Wales. They're my reflections. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any other comments before Councillor Pond comes back on those? Yeah. You haven't got... Yeah. Yeah. Just get the tag up. Yeah. Comments and yeah. observations. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Councillor Pond comes back and then you've all got... Based on the two issues that have been that have been raised, Councillor Barnett and Councillor Peacock, um, the the only the only advice that I can give is obviously I have spoken with the uh, monitoring officer of the district council, um, and uh, Councillor Pond and I have, have have worked on the wording to ensure that uh, that the motion did what he he was seeking for it to do. Um, we did have a conversation about um, um, uh, the discretionary. Um, that's wrong word. Um, the um, can't think of the right word. Um, the interpretation of um, codes of conduct, the interpretation of standing orders, and it does remain and will remain, even with a change, a grey area. And it is down to each and every councillor to determine whether they feel something um, is, is affected by the code of conduct. Conduct. It is down to each and every councillor to make a personal decision as to whether or not, um, as to the value of something that's been accepted. Um, but first and foremost, it's, it comes back down to um, what, what, what have you accepted and why have you accepted it? Is there any untoward reason behind that? And um, obviously, councillors, I believe, are always have that high in their mind when they when they look when they have anything approached to them or they're asked to attend something whether it be check a meet whether it be um any other event um opening of a of a, of a um a new um, development or something like that planning um as you all know is something that we are very very careful about and uh, we're always very very cautious um it's it's a difficult one um yes the standing orders do already have these protections in them or alludes to them just not quite in the prescribed manner that um, councillor pond is seeking to to see um a little further clarity it's a really very much a shades of gray area that's why we have the monitoring officer of the district that's why there is the independent panel at the district um so that when there is concern questions can be asked and hopefully the correct and the right advice followed. Um, integrity is, is, is the word. In my view, as the clerk, this council acts with integrity. Um, if councillors feel that a little bit of tightening up to help with the clarification as to that integrity or as to what we are being asked to do, I don't think it's a major concern. But it's not my decision to make. It is your decision to make. <laughs> That's exactly what I've said to you several times, isn't it, Councillor Pond? Um, so it's it's very difficult for me to make any any particular comment. I I don't see major ramifications based on what's being proposed. Um, I can see that there may be some concern as to the the nth degree, as raised by um, Councillor Peacock, and I guess it's one of those things that will will come out in the fullness of time. Um, Councillor Pond, I think you deserve your time. Yeah. So, thank you, thank you, councillors, for those comments. Um, I can take them to, to in turn if I could. So, so first of all, this is not really changing anything. And, and what do I mean by that? Our current practice, and I want to address the fifty pound, twenty five pound. When I joined as new councillor, I'm a new councillor. I asked and looked and tried to figure out what it is. Having spoke with the town clerk, it was current process procedure that we would capture in a hospital book everything over 25 pound below 50 pound 
Unfortunately, that is not written anywhere. So what this motion, one of the three bits it's doing is actually writing that down. So currently that is to also to protect ourselves as councillors, that there was a process that we all, I believe, followed. However, it's actually not written in our same order. So firstly, that £25 is, my understanding is, has been practised for a number of years, but actually was nowhere in our same order. So that is not changing per se what we are been doing, but is writing it down so it's very clear, very transparent for everybody. Um, secondly, uh, therefore, the other point it makes is £50. That is in agreement and in line with the Code of Conduct. So my motion, again, is not changing anything. It is purely reinforcing what the Code of Conduct says into our standing orders and being very clear, very transparent as to um, what we are to do as councillors. So this is as much to protect us as councillors so we know exactly what to do as it is the transparency and integrity of our uh, electorate. Um, so firstly, so just to reinforce, £25 is what we've been doing. It's just not been written down. The £50 was currently in the Code of Conduct. But uh, to the point that Councillor Peacock mentioned, it is a framework. It's a framework we aligned to. It doesn't tell us how to do things in the end degree. That is what the standing orders are about. They are about taking that framework and we are an independent body that can make our own decisions within the context of the framework. And therefore, my wording is purely to take that framework, apply that into our standing orders so that we actually codify exactly what's happening. Um, so I've covered the, the framework. Um, and I say there's a lot of grey area. And I think the whole point of this motion is to actually take away that grey area by clearly stipulating that everything over £25 needs to go in the hospitality book and that everything over £50 needs to go in the declaration of interest is very clear, very concise, and is in agreement with the Code of Conduct. So, I'll finish that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't come back, unfortunately, the way we're, we're going to stick to... We're on, we're on standing orders, we're going to stick to standing orders. <laughs> um, so... With that round up from Council Conduct, the ends the debate section for this motion. So can I move to a vote? We have uh, on the table to approve that, been seconded. So can I have a show of hands to adopt that point to the standing orders, please? Can I just qualify? There was two elements in the start. Which one? You voted on the first one already. The first one's adopted. <laughs> so we are voting to it's be very clear this is this is to insert a new standing order 13a being the lga model councillor code of conduct uh, sorry we've done that bit <laughs> apologies um it was it's the it's the new um it's the new one 13h in respect of code of conduct 10.2 all gifts and hospitality accepted or refused or of any value should be added to the hospitality book with an estimated value of over £25. And where the amount has exceeded £50 in value, that entry should be also made in the declaration of interests within 28 days, which will then be notified to the monitoring officer by the proper officer of the council. Okay, so we'll, are we're we all clear what you're voting on now? I'll just clarify, I've been straight until I've heard the percentage or refused all of any value. I thought it meant any value. Are you actually saying I thought it was any value had to be added and then you had only estimated value if it was only 25 pounds a year. Yes, that's right. Uh, it is, but I thought some people were saying it only has to be entered if it's only 25 pounds. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So, Mark, that's my understanding was it was the bracket if over 25 pounds was the caveat. So, that's what the intention of my motion was, the brackets of over £25 was. So we're not to write every pound of pence and coffee. This is around, yeah. again, this is with what we have been doing as a council. I understand we've been doing this council for many years. It's everything over £25 goes in the hospitality book. No, no, everything, every, over everything goes in the hospitality book. And it's only if it's over £25 you have to give an estimated value. I'm not sure that's that was my intention. I would suggest that can I do a motion to amend? You can't. You can't amend your own motion, <laughs> but somebody else can. Right. So the way we need to do this, just to 
because this is where the Senate and these sort of debates can get unwieldy. Okay, so your motion, your motion currently stands. Yeah. Okay, um, that would need to go to a vote. What would need to happen is that would, would need to fail I, um, and then be amended. No, I, I don't think. Although that's where we actually are in the procedure. Okay. If you if you if you now amend this and take it down, the substantive of it can't then go forward. So you can't do that. What I suggest we do before we go to the vote is we have an amendment. Okay. Um, and um, and we just need to agree on the wording of that amendment. So um, if I can be just absolutely clear, yes. what you're asking, therefore, is that only items of value, estimated value of £25 should be entered into the hospitality book. That's yes, what you're asking me, for. If I can state it now, in respect of code and conduct, 10.2, or given hospitality accepted or refused, over the value of £25 should be added to the hospitality book full stop. Oh, where the where the amount is exceeded £50 in value. Yeah. Right. So so what you would like to do is move um, the if over £25 words and you'd like them to be after um, refused. Yes. Correct. Yes. So that it would read in respect of the code of conduct 10.2, all gifts and hospitality accepted or refused if over £25 should be added to the hospitality Correct. book. Right. So, what you're asking for somebody to please um, move is an amendment to strike out the words of any value and to replace them with the words which are currently in brackets following the word value if over £25. And to, to move that from one point to the other. Is that what you're asking? Correct. Yeah. That's what somebody, which I'm afraid can't be counted upon, as he is the original, the move of the original um, uh, uh, motion, so he can't amend it. Somebody else will need to make that amendment, which will then be voted on, and then that becomes the substantive, and then we, um, we then vote on the substantive at that point. So uh, does anybody wish to make that amendment? Oh. Thank you. Can um, I have a so second? Thank you. Okay, so we have that amendment in there now. Well, can we? No, you need to vote on the amendment. Can we vote on the amendment, please. This is just on the amendment. That's right. Excellent, thank you. Okay, that's so, so, your substantive now reads. I got this right. Everyone listen very carefully now, please. I shall say this only once. <laughs> Right. Please tell me this is right. In respect of Code of Conduct 10.2, all gifts and hospitality accepted or refused, if over £25, shall be added to the hospitality book with an estimated value. And where the amount has exceeded £50 in value, that entry should also be made into the declaration of interest within 28 days, which will then be notified to the monitoring officer by the proper party of the council. Thank you. Thank you. Just a small order. Mr. Yeah. can anyone come back on that discussion? We discussed it now, that's been amended. Um, they shouldn't come back on the substantive, but if there's anything they wish to say about the amendment, I think it would be all right for you to accept it. So if the amendment has altered your questions or point of views, or you have a question on it, then please say no. It's just so I could understand, because this is fast moving, no offence to the point, but this is I believe that that's absolutely right. What you will now be, if I'm correct, and that, um, <clears throat> this is how I'm going to read this, so <laughs> please tell me if this is not how you understand it. Um, it's this is stating that therefore all gifts and hospitality accepted or refused if over £25 gets added into the hospitality book with a value, which means amounts of under £25 do not get added into the hospitality book, which is the current position. So therefore the change is that uh, you will no longer be declaring nominal amounts. So just to clarify for you, Councillor Pickup, and I think... I know you want to say something. Thank you, just answer. Is at the moment, this is how we operate yeah. anyway. Yeah. All that this motion is doing is formalising it mm -hmm. at this point. And I do think I was keeping quiet on the matter beforehand, it was a bit grey. 
and I didn't get it. That amendment has now just formalised what we currently do. I shouldn't really let you come back on it, just to be... So we are now just formalising something that currently exists. It is not, this is not a significant change as it was originally, actually. Um, the only difference you now have is that um, any amount which has been accepted or refused, that's it, that's, that's one of the, the things... Refused now has no amount, yes. Um, the thing pounds must be included in the yeah. hospitality book, um, whereas before you were only required to make any declaration of anything refused over £50 pounds on your declaration of interests. I think the reality here is the numbers of gifts that are accepted or refused by any councillors are actually very, very small. Um, in, the, in any councillor's position when they are married, it's treated slightly differently because you go to lots and lots of things. Um, but as regular councillors, it is very, very small. I, don't, I think I've declared a handful of things ever in the, in the many years I've done. So um, please can we move to a vote to adopt this with the approved amendment. All in favour, please raise your hands. I'll take against if you because not and against, them, but that is a carried carried motion. Thank you. I bet you all, when you signed up to be councillors, wanted to be discussing these sort of things, didn't you? <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. So, and number twelve is to approve the dates of the council meetings for twenty twenty four, twenty twenty five. Um. Please recommend, I would recommend that you approve the following dates in 24-25 for Hawke Council to meet. Annual uh, Council Monday the 13th of May, Special Council 20th of June, Council 1st of July, Council 7th of October, Council 6th of January, Special Council 27th of January and Council 7th of April. Please cast for a second on this. Uh, okay. Any questions on that? Can we show of hands to adopt those dates? Yeah. <coughs> it gets even more fun now we go on to item number 13 financial risk we're discussed um the impact rating on the following <laughs> items has been amended do i do you need me to read all of these out they're, they're in the agenda so no you don't need to read them all out there are a lot they are in the agenda please refer to them in the agenda because to read them all out will be quite boring but um they are all in the agenda. Hopefully you've all read the agenda. Can I propose those? No, no second. Second. Any <laughs> questions on those at all? No questions. Can I have a statement from then? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just wanted to uh, thank Sam Clark and uh, Dan and all the officers for the work they've done for that. It's, um, it's uh, a really good, uh, it's very reassuring to know that uh, we're in safe hands. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> In that case, uh, have a show of hands. To Thank, you. Thank you for allowing me not to read all that out. <laughs> I am slightly dyslexic in reading all those letters and letters, <coughs> but my eyes hurt. My earmarked reserves. The agenda refers to request to uh, list some earmarked reserves. It is clear that the reserves are no longer needed. They should be returned to general reserves, or in this case, reallocated as a vehement from one cost center to another. Movement of reserves is a power reserve for full council. As the Sunnyside Farm Project is needing funds, council are requested <laughs> to allow them to be bid for this use. I propose that we veer from cost centre 400 slash 4099 DFib batteries £1,000, leaving £3,321 in reserve. Cost centre 999 slash 4182 graffiti removal. 2,500, leaving 1,819 in this reserve. This will create a three and a half thousand pound earmarked reserve, principally for new tables and chairs at Sunnyside Barn, in a new cost centre 300 slash 4061. May I have a second for that? I would have a second. Do we have anyone wishes to speak on this at all? All those in favour? 
thank you, Council, for a long meeting, a full meeting, and we had some good council discussions there. Well done. That was that was that was good. Um, in that case, I would like to close tonight's meeting and remind you all that the next meeting at the town council is Monday, the 29th of January, for budget and precept. The time is 8:26. Meeting close.